Hello everyone. Welcome to Interpretation of Topographical Map Part 11. In this video, we are going to learn about the conventional signs and symbols for buildings, some important facilities and boundaries. What are these conventional signs and symbols? We know that topographical maps gives us a bird's eye view that is from the above. Say for example from an aeroplane, if you see the ground below, how the ground is visible just like that you will be able to see the topographical maps and it is impossible to label every single feature in words on a map therefore we use various signs and symbols and in order to avoid confusion the survey of india has standardized a set of conventional signs and symbols to be used in topographical maps so, there are many conventional signs and symbols used in our topographical map. Now, you will have a doubt. Should we learn all these conventional signs and symbols? No, all these symbols will usually be given below the topographical map for your board exam. So, it is enough if you know to identify these symbols. Let's see some important conventional signs and symbols. Buildings. Permanent hut. Temporary hut. As you can see, the permanent hut, the squares will be shaded. For a temporary hut, it will not be shaded. Only the outline will be there in red. And a group of huts and other buildings together, we call them as a settlement. And in some settlements, you can see the symbol X. It means it is deserted. That is, nobody is living there now. So, in this map, you can see these squares in fully red color. These are permanent huts whereas these squares that are having only the outline in red these are temporary huts whereas these uh, are settlements Nani Batamal Ranavas are settlements but you see in the northern part also we have one more Nani Batamal and Ranavas and near them you can see the X mark it means these settlements are deserted now so it means from the northern part the people have migrated to the Southern part, this Nani Batamal and Ranavas here. Next, number 5, Antiquities. Now, these are places of historical importance. As you can see from the map, we have a place called Delvara. This is in a settlement called Abu. Number 6 is Hospital and number 7 is Dispensary. If you remove the circle outside for the hospital symbol, the plus alone, it indicates Dispensary. Now, what is a Dispensary? Okay, uh, you can think of a primary health center where medicines are given for poor people generally for free of cost, right? So, that is a dispensary. Now, the symbol for hospital instead of red, if it is there in blue, then it is a veterinary hospital and dispensary. Now, in this map, you can see the veterinary hospital in blue and the red color hospital symbol near that, you can see the word Ayurvedic. It means it is an Ayurvedic hospital. Number 9, 10, 11 and 12 are places of worship. Mandir is nothing but temple. And church, mosque, idga, you know these places. Now the most commonly used symbol in our topographical map is Mandir. So they may even ask you a question as uh, what do you infer about the religion of a people in a particular settlement. So if you see lot of Mandir in that particular settlement then your answer should be Hinduism. Number 13 is a Chatri. This is a symbol for a Chatri. There is only a small difference between the symbol for a Mandir and a Chatri. Uh, so, this is a picture of a Chatri. It is an elevated dome-shaped pavilion specially used in the Indo-Islamic and Indian architecture. Number 14 is a tomb and number 15 is a grave. Now, these pictures tells you the difference between a tomb and a grave. As you can see, tomb is for great people. When they die, we construct a monument over them. Whereas grave is for common people. When common people die, we usually bury or burn them in a grave and this is a topographical map here you can see the difference between the symbol for a temple and a chatri and in this map you can also see graves number 16 this is a symbol for a tower so mobile towers or clock towers it may be anything 
and number 17 is a kiln near that usually the word lime or brick will be seen so when you see the word lime it is a lime kiln a place where limestone is converted into lime and brick kiln is a place where blocks of clay are converted into bricks number 18 and 19 are the means of communication post office and telegram office the most commonly seen symbol in our topographical map is post office so the question may be what is the means of communication used by the people in a particular settlement so if you see post office or telegram office that will be the answer number 20 is police station in some maps instead of police station police chowki will be there it is a police outpost under the control of a police station so as you can see in this map this is a difference between a police station and a police chowki number 21 rest house or inspection bungalow and number 22 is a circuit house both are government buildings specially for government officials for a short stay now this symbol i usually remember it as rest house the roof is white okay so in this map you can see the difference between the rest house and circuit house next is dark bungalow bungalow is a small bungalow which is also government owned but it is on the wayside meant for travelers for a short stay number 24 and 25 is public works department and central public works department in settlement abu map you can see the symbol pwd and cpwd now coming to the other symbols 26 and 27 power line with pylons when you see the circles shaded with lines connecting them then it is a power line with pylons whereas when the circles are not shaded then they are power line with poles so this picture tells you the difference between a pylon and a pole and whenever you see these symbols in a topographical map it means those settlements are having power supply 28 and 29 are boundary pillars when you see the square shaded it means it is a surveyed pillar usually they will be fenced whereas if you see them in black and white then it is an unlocated pillar which is not fenced so this is a picture of a boundary pillar you can see them near settlement abu next is tourist site this blue color star represents a tourist site number 31 a stone quarry is a place where you mine stone limestone quarry is a place where you extract limestone and marble stone quarry is a place from where you extract marble number 34 is sand dunes i think you know hills of sand found in desert and semi desert regions are called sand dunes you see the symbol here the cluster of brown dots on the left side so these represent sand dunes 35 whenever you have sand dunes in a topographical map you can see these words dep it represents a depression depressions are formed when the top of the sand dune is blown away by wind leaving a hollow number 36 is stony waste as you can see from the picture it is a land covered by rock boulders and stones and here cultivation is not possible and 37 is a rock outcrop I think you see the difference between these two pictures rock outcrop is a portion of a rock strata which juts out above the surface of the earth and it is exposed to view coming to boundaries first one is international boundary it is the boundary between two different countries we don't have the symbol in our topographical map so next is state boundary so state boundary is between two different states and this can be divided into demarcated and undemarcated in our topographical map we can see this demarcated state boundary that is we will have two different colors for the two states whereas undemarcated means there is no fixed boundary at and 41 is a district boundary uh, this symbol again uh, i have not seen it in any of our topographical maps so coming to 42 
tahsil or taluk boundary we know that the district is divided into several tahsils or taluk so between two taluks we will have this taluk boundary and finally forest boundary you can see the symbol whenever you have a forest area in a map and it will be connected by green color so we have come to the end of our video so here are some revision questions try to identify these conventional signs and symbols don't take more than 5 minutes to identify them so i think you have completed so here are the answers so i hope you understood all the conventional signs and symbols clearly make sure that you are thorough with these symbols so that you can answer them very quickly during the board exam so thank you for watching this video do like share and subscribe to my channel see you in my next video until then bye bye